Hi, this is Tara Graves, and welcome to 21st Century Learning and Social Studies. This uh, webinar, our objectives are to identify the standards for social studies regarding informational text and primary source documents, increase your awareness of Web 2.0 tools which support these social studies standards, share some ideas and strategies, show a few resources at each grade level, and motivate you to explore more about the tools which interest you. Our guiding framework is what we call the six dimensions of 21st century learning environments. And this is a one-page guide that we share with teachers so they can understand how to um, implement these six dimensions and what it looks like when you're planning learning activities. If you look across the bottom, you'll see that there are six arrows and the idea is that you, if you are focusing on uh, real world problem solving and innovation, you'd want to look at this description and look at your activity and see if you can um, answer yes to this box here and if you can say yes to that you move up and so on. You cannot skip over any boxes uh, and the goal is to try to get up here where uh, that would mean that your that learning activity is the most uh, student focused or student centered type of learning. Okay. When the video stops, you'll be able to click a link to view this in a larger um, window. And you can also bookmark that link or download um, the file. Looking at the social studies standards, um, these are found in the English Language Arts uh, Common Core Standards. And what I've done here is to pull out just the informational text section of the standards and show you the progression from kindergarten through 12th grade. If you didn't print out your grade level, standards sheet. Um, when the video pauses, I encourage you to print that out and as we look through the tools, uh, you'll be given an opportunity to explore and jot down some ideas or um, look at uh, which tools you want to explore some more. And I'd like you to go ahead and write that down on your standards page. These are the types of tech tools and resources, uh, basically the categories that I've separated out. Um, we'll take a look at a few samples of each category, and then we'll go directly to the grade level um, specific examples, and you'll have the opportunity to also explore those tools and write down some ideas. So let's take a look at digital storytelling. The first tool is Powtoon. And this is a really neat uh, tool for creating an animated uh, comic, comic strip and where you can add, it has music, it has um, all these animated figures pretty easy click and drag type of format and it looks really cool. I'll just play a little bit of this video. Okay, so that's just a little taste 
of what it looks like and it's pretty easy to use. The next one is EPUB Bud and students can create their own books. They can upload their own images and writing. See, that's just a, sc a scan of uh, a paper that a student has done. And see here, it's because it was a younger uh, child. They've taken out author information. Uh, let me look at another example. And this looks uh, mostly for looks a, a good example for uh, those younger students. what's nice about this is um, students it will always be here they can share it with anybody with a simple link and it's very easy for students to um, create a digital portfolio when they've created stuff online this one's nice uh, little bird tails and with this one they can either draw something they can find um, any of the artwork that is uh, within the program itself or they can upload their own image or picture and then they just record themselves uh, reading the book. ABC is another tool for creating an animated story. So you can explore a little more of that tool. Cartoon, whoops. Cartoon stock here is um, where you can find all kinds of cartoons by, that someone else has, has done. And what's great about um, using this for older students when you get into looking at political cartoons and looking at um, point of view for different events, uh, that would be a good resource for that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here to Pixton for schools and play a little bit of the video. So again, that's another really easy to use animation tool. And this last resource on this slide, uh, Richard Byrne has this great blog. If you are not familiar with it, it's free technology for teachers, uh, freetechforteachers.com with the F number four in there. And he's got some great ideas of using comics in the classroom and also some other tools that I did not add to the um, 
slide that you can take a look at those also. Okay, so when the video stops, go ahead and uh, look at your grade level standards sheet and then you'll have all the links to these tools and you can explore those for um, I would say no longer than about uh, 10 minutes and then come back to the video. Okay, so our next category is lesson plans and guided lessons and there are a lot. Um, you'll find many of these at each grade level when we look at the grade level slides um, but let's just give you a short overview uh, of each of these tools. Kids in the House, so the House of Representatives, um, and it has all these different levels. So young learners would be that uh, pre-K uh, and up to, I think, kindergarten or second grade. Then you have the um, intermediate grades, I believe fourth through sixth, middle school, and then high school. And this one's on the young learners page. And you see the different um, activities here. So what is Congress? Okay. So just a, a short little activity they've given you teacher resources, a glossary. Okay. And then at each grade level, you'll see how it they have the same uh, topics, but it just goes more in depth and has um, grade level appropriate activities. Read, Write, Think is an excellent website, not just for social studies, but for just about every subject. This one in particular that I'm showing here is the uh, reading informational text using the 321 strategy. And all of their lessons have the same format. So they give you all of the, um, it's correlated to standards, you can look up by state, you can look up by common core and grade level. And it's all nice uh, and, and uh, organized here for all the things you need to do. So read, write, think. Teachinghistory.org this has a lot of different materials and lessons and interactives and games. Ed.gov. This is a booklet and it has a lot of great information that you could share with parents. But, and helping them to understand history. So that's a nice uh, resource, not only for teachers, but parents as well. LearnZillion is an amazing site. It's got um, wonderful interactive. So using this, if you don't have um, a device for each student, this would be a great thing that you can put up on an interactive whiteboard or a projector and do these with um, your students. I'm just going to click on one of these and see how it's got the Common Core standard there. And it's video.
Okay, so you get the idea. There's a video, there's guided notes. Let me just click on that one. So any of these things can be done where you you either print it out or you put it up on the overhead projector and it goes along with the video lesson. Great resource. You don't have to recreate it. So that was Learn Zillion. Our next one is Scholastic. If you have not investigated the Scholastic website, they have a ton of resources uh, for just about anything you can think of. This is one for grades one through five that actually take us through um, a whole unit plan of introducing nonfiction. All the different uh, pieces of the unit. and anything that you would need to print out. So that's pretty cool. It's already uh, ready for you to go. National Archives <coughs> for you, uh, for any grade level, but especially uh, middle school and high school. Uh, the National Archives website has tons of teacher resources. Uh, they have these uh, analysis worksheets. And what's nice about these is students can click in here and they can write, they can type all their information directly in there and then they can print it out and turn it in or print it to a PDF and, and submit it electronically. If you have access to um, iPads, um, it would be um, really cool. This Docs Teach is actually, it's a website, but it, you can do it on the website, but it's really cool if we do it on the iPad because students can you can create classes in here and um, assign activities based around uh, primary source documents and depending on what your focus is for the lesson you can choose these different activities so you create an activity and you do have to create an account, it is free. Um, so I just did uh, create an activity and you can click and browse for any documents. Uh, you can add the documents to your activity and then you can make an assignment where students have to um, work through it and complete. So that was the National Archives. Library of Congress, very similar, uh, but lots of different materials. You can sort uh, by Common Core Standards in whatever state you live in, uh, by grade level. And so I hit the search button and you can see, uh, you can see what it brings up and all of these are focused on the standards. It tells you what is available. So I, if I click on this one where it says 15 classroom materials, it shows me everything that's available. The primary source set, okay, so it shows you um, the piece of information. So the poetry, this is a poem, and then the analysis tool and guide. So if that interests you, you can check that out. Neo K-12 has everything, everything, everything. So if we go to 
Let's go to the Civil War. It's got these quiz games, other online games and activities, presentations, videos, just everything. This is almost like a one-stop shop. These would also be great um, if you are having a sub and you can put together um, just a bunch of uh, links like this that the um, sub can take the kids through. So they're, the lesson's are already done and a lot of them are uh, video based and so it would make it a lot easier uh, than rewriting everything that you want them to do. Teaching today is um, a book, a textbook publisher's um, resource guide. So just some resources there. Test takers vocabulary for social studies. Beyond the Bubble is an amazing uh, site through Stanford University. And this is also looking at um, Library of Congress documents. Uh, and I would say mostly uh, upper grades and middle and high school would be the most appropriate for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and let you, uh, when the video stops, go ahead and let you uh, explore these resources. I'll just show you. This one is uh, Sweet Search, which is actually a search engine that comes up with only stuff that's appropriate for education and in any topic. Um, my search uh, here was just for social studies and this is just uh, it col er puts everything together um, videos and other websites and so on. Uh, so that's sweet search. Reading like a historian Great lesson plans here, also from Stanford, National Writing Project. Schmoop is one of those that is similar to Neo K-12. It's got just a bunch of things, video, lessons, games, and they also have apps for the iPad. Okay, so explore time. When the video stops, go ahead and take, I would say probably um, 10 to 15 minutes to explore your, um, the, the resources you like the most and to jot down some notes on your standard sheet. Okay, so our next category is interactives and games. And uh, let's just take a look at this first one is National Geographic Kids. And I think most of these would be appropriate for all age levels. And there's a variety of topics. It's not just history or nonfiction just some pretty interesting things on on here so when you when the recording stops you may want to check that out we've already looked at kids in the house the, they also have some games and interactions or interactives on there this is one of my favorite um, interactives on read write think and it's called the cube creator and mostly looking at this bio cube for um, these social studies standards. And I'll just click on here. Okay, and then <clears throat> I can click on the planning sheet. Always a good idea. So it's kind of like writing out um, what you want to put on the cube. Okay, so students would do that first. 
And then, once they've done that, if you click on the cube icon itself, you type in all the different things you want to include. Oh, no, I can't remember. I think it was Nebraska. No, that's not right. We'll just skip over that part. Um, I just want to show you. As it goes through each thing. Okay, so I'm just kind of uh, ad limbing here. Okay, so now once I have all the pieces in place, and it, you can go to each of the different sides, and you click finish. Now this is cool because it, it formats it in the box for you. And then you can print it out, and so you can print it out and then cut it out. It tells you how to cut it out and put it all together. So that's can be used for just about any uh, topic. So let me go back and I'll show you um, this one. So then you can create your own cube and really have it fit whatever purpose you have. Um, so if you don't like the BioCube, you can use it um, and fill in your own questions for each side. Schmoop, we didn't take a look at it in the last slide, so let's just pop right, in. oh no, we did look at this one. That wasn't the one I was thinking of. Kia is a nice site for uh, creating quizzes. This one is not free, so you would have to um, join and they do have a 30-day trial uh, so I would try it for 30 days and see if you like it um, this one's set up with different games okay and so it just goes on from there and all different to all different topics they have frequently asked questions and so on. So Kia is a cool one to check out. Zoonall.com is a WebQuest site and if you take a look at this um, matrix here uh, you can focus on a certain grade level and topic. These numbers represent how many WebQuests are um, indexed uh, you can also, this one I have uh, just for 6 through 8. Okay, so there's all the different web quests. They're all formatted the same. You can also create your own. Okay, it follows the traditional web quest format. And then if you have a specific topic you want to search for, you can just click on the search button and type in exactly what you want to look for. Great, uh, web quests are great for using um, collaboration, having students collaborate, working in groups of four is the, the best number for web quests. And this site also provides um, the roles for each student in the group. 
and because students can create or a teacher can create their own um, be great for a project. iCivics has simulations for different okay here we go um, they can play the simulations okay you can see the different topics here branches of power bill of rights voting and so on and they've recently upgraded their site um, and to include a badge program Okay, so you get the idea. A lot of really fun um, simulations and games on that site. This one is uh, Google Lit Trips, and what these are are incorporating Google Earth with different literature and plotting out um, different places mentioned in the story uh, where they took place. These are all created by teachers. And basically what you do is you go through and you connect um, and it goes onto Google Earth and you just follow the different um, paths across the map according to the story. So this one's uh, the Anne Frank one. Really fun. These three here will help you and your students learn and practice their vocabulary. So when the uh, video stops, if you'd like to explore the vocabulary um, tools, those are right there. Gapminder is a great source for looking at uh, data uh, about different world topics. And there's teacher's guides and other resources that are free to use. So really interesting ways to look at data. And then this last one here is an interactive game um, about uh, the Federal Reserve. So it's neat because um, students can raise uh, the rate, the funds rate, and see how it affects unemployment and inflation. Really interesting way for them to see what, um, what actually happens in the financial world. Okay, so when the video stops, you'll have a chance to explore. Uh, the resources on this page and again don't don't spend more than 10 minutes uh, you will have time to um, explore more uh, after the webinar okay our next topic projects and presentations uh, we're going to take a look at some ways that students can uh, show what they know and also um, work collaboratively. These first four here are all presentation tools. Glogster is a really cool 
tool, and I've, I've gone into the Glogpedia, but basically what these are are multimedia posters, which are like a digital collage. And what's also cool about Glogster is you can use already uh, created Glogs in your instruction or for homework. So all of these are embedded YouTube videos. And you won't have sound on this uh, until you click out into uh, your own links after um, we get to the end of this slide. But really neat resource and students really love to create uh, their, their collages. If you click on Tour, it really shows you how um, to get started. And make sure you do go to the edu.glogster.com uh, because, let me show you how to get to the free version. They kind of have it hidden. So make sure you go to edu.glogster.com and then scroll down on the pricing page till you get to this free version plus a 30 day premium trial. So you always have the free version but they do give you 30 days to look at what the premium uh, version looks like. So make sure you go there. Slides in Google Drive is much like PowerPoint except for it's a lot better because it's web-based and collaborative. Students can work on projects together on, on their presentation. They can all edit at the same time and the teacher can be added for uh, giving feedback and looking at progress and looking at what students, what each student in the group has done. So I'll just show you real briefly Google Slides. And these are all slideshows uh, that I've created. And when you go to start a new one, uh, it looks much like what you're used to, probably with PowerPoint. Um, has all the different themes, page layouts. You change the background, color, and images. Okay, just with the added uh, bonus of being able to share with other people and then just give the link out to others you just want to show the video or the um, presentation. Haiku Deck is another presentation tool that's all web based and on the iPad and this really helps uh, students focus on keeping the slide mostly um, image instead of text. And then Prezi is one of those great tools um, that breaks people out of their uh, linear presentation format and there's a lot of great templates based on what type of topic you have. So you just click on the template and you see all the slides here are already created for you and you can change all of the different con um, content. You can zoom in zoom out, and so on. So a uh, really fun tool to use. These two, History Pin and Time Toast, are mostly tools dealing with um, using maps and history. So 
let me just click into one here it's a great way to connect history and geography and it has all these images here that you can click into and get more information and this is also a collaborative tool so more than one person can work on it at a time time toast again you can browse timelines or you can create your own and so it's really cool to be able to click on each plot point and look closer see if there's more information make it bigger And this one takes a little practice uh, getting to use the features. And you can see people have created them from all over the world. just another way for students to show uh, what they know. ThingLink is a fun tool and basically you take an image so thinking about those um, primary source documents and adding extra information. So all of these little plot points here uh, lead you to another bit of information and this is a uh, YouTube video so that all pops up just from that one image and again these are collaborative you can share them uh, with a link and many of these tools you'll uh, you'll want to check out and see what they have for educators and go ahead and sign up and if you really like this tool you know this one you can upgrade for thirty five dollars a year so I recommend checking that out whoa so infographics is our next set. Now this is an infographic here and basically it's a way to show data visually and what's more powerful um, than a textbook is because it has images and it synthesizes data and makes it more accessible to students. Um, we would much rather look, I think everybody would much rather look at something like this then read probably three or four pages out of a textbook and we can end up getting the same information and remembering it because we associate it with images so here are a few tools 
that not only have infographics you can use, but also create your own. So I'm going to click on the cool infographics. And you can see most of them do uh, go vertically. So that whole thing that I just scrolled down was one infographic. Okay. Uh, this, these are tools to also create them. So if I click on uh, see more projects. And there's the different. Um, a lot of infographics are used in advertising because they are so interesting to look at. And this one is actually a video infographic. Okay, uh, and the audio you can check out when you have time to explore. Here's some different samples on Easily. And what's great is you can just go in and edit these uh, to suit your purpose. or you can start with a blank one. So pretty pretty cool, they're very drag and drop, uh, very simple to use and infograms. Alright, so when the video stops, take a few minutes to um, just briefly explore those tools and jot down some notes on which ones you want to dig deeper with. <coughs> Our next category is use of video, and YouTube is um, an excellent resource for not only funny cat videos but also um, educational videos as well. Uh, this is a funny um, song parody for um, Apologize, that song, but it has to do with the de Declaration of Independence. Um, kids are watching YouTube videos all day long, um, other funny type videos, but if we show them that there are also ways to learn with video uh, that's that's handy as well so checking out YouTube and you may not know that there are two kind of sub sites of YouTube that are strictly for teachers in education and if you look through here it does have uh, videos sorted uh, by age group, see the different topics, and of course you can always just search for something. and just pulling out just short clips and having students watch that 
and the other one is uh, youtube.com teachers and this is where um, teachers are uploading videos that they've created and again you can search for um, specific topics as well okay we've uh, already looked at National Geographic Kids and Neo K-12 and Schmoop all three of those have um, again variety of content including video Get crazy with the mouse here. Teaching Channel is a great resource for um, videos. This one uh, in particular is for the kindergarten audience. And it's great because teachers have contributed these lessons and they have um, different questions for you to think about. So this is mostly for your own learning. Uh, some of them might be appropriate to, to have in a lesson and share with students, but many of these are for uh, your own personal learning. TeacherTube is uh, the go-to uh, for schools that are for districts that do not have access to YouTube at school. and you can just search for your topic and again you can also upload videos here just uh, like you can on YouTube and share uh, those with students uh, for homework reasons or or for if you're flipping your classroom and these are the Schoolhouse Rock videos I know that I remember a lot of things about how a bill becomes a law and about the Constitution and a variety of topics because of these videos and the catchy songs. So anytime that you can use these tools, um, it will help students remember. Okay. When the video stops, go ahead and explore a few of these resources. Okay, our last category is um, apps and these are for iOS devices, so Apple, um, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these uh, because I realize not everyone has an iPad that's available to them. Um, but I do want to share with you some of the ones that I just think are pretty cool. Alright. Alright, so Docs Teach is that companion app that goes with the Docs Teach from the National Archives um, website and you can create lessons on here that students can go through and what's really neat about this app is that they can submit um, their assignment um, to the teacher as they go through it So it tells you what the um, what the document is, and then you can see the actual image of it, and you can zoom in and go to the next page. Okay. 
and then you see the questions down below they can click on I'm done and then it says using this Google map view the route the schooner Amistad took from Africa to the United States so you can click out And you can see the map here of the different points. This really makes it come alive. And then once they've gone through the lesson, then they just type in uh, their teacher's email address and they can put their name in and then their response to the prompt and then that'll send the email directly to the teacher so I really love this app and you see the flashcards the Quizlet another vocabulary app uh, this is also from Schmoop uh, has the US history test prep so for those high school students that are in AP classes. Here's all the different uh, content that they can look through. There's drills. Okay, so it's really good for them to uh, have this as a practice tool. Uh, again, you have some other interactives um, with the American History one. There's a Toontastic, which is also creating little animated uh, cartoons. The reference type apps like the Declaration of Independence. So they can read more about uh, the one the people who signed it. and then you can just search through the document or find the nearest hair, hair salon as well for Google. This one, uh, there's a National Archive one that's called Today's Document. So it, what it does is it finds a document um, randomly throughout the archives and it just posts um, that document each day. So this kind of a, be a neat way to have uh, the class start each day just looking at um, an image or a document. And you see you can go you can go to the previous day, you can go to today or the next day. There's a little calendar. Uh, so kids could select their birth date. Uh, just a fun way to get them to interact. Glogster has their own app as well. Uh, Museum is great to see. Um, what this is is a pretty much a snapshot of a front page from newspapers all over the world. So if there was a specific country you wanted to look for or if you just wanted to look for papers across the United States or you can look through the world. This is a good app to use when you're looking at point of view for like the same um, event and you want to see how different countries are viewing the same event. Uh, it's good for them to have this as a resource. And also for um, students learning a second language um, they can take a look at um, 
actual newspapers in the language that they're learning. Using that app as well would be helpful for understanding uh, culture and uh, how things are going in the other parts of the world. This is a really cool one. I'll just take a couple, um, a minute on this one. Uh, but this is the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it has images and text and videos, audio files. It's just amazing, and you cannot hear the um, the audio probably from this, but it's pretty cool. It has the, the recordings. Uh, so if you're studying the Cuban Missile Crisis, amazing, amazing app um, to use with kids. And I also have a lot of infographic. This one is actually um, teaches you um, about infographics. So it's like a little lesson. So it does tell you a little bit about each one. And then you can look through at the data. And there are a few to create. This is an interactive one where I can look at different uh, demographics. So really just for reference. Okay, you get the idea. All right, so there are a lot of other apps. Um, so if you do have access to an iPad, even if you just have one iPad, um, you can still use this with students. Um, what I just used, the tool that I used to mirror that onto my computer is called Air Server. And um, it is not free. I believe it was like $20 or $13, something like that. But that way, if you only have one device, you can actually still have um, students see uh, and interact with the app itself. All right, when this uh, video stops, um, you'll have some time to um, explore the apps. If you don't have an iPad, um, you can go ahead and just uh, write in the submission, no iPad, and then move on. All right, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these next slides, uh, but I will give you the opportunity to explore. Um, but mostly the slides at the end, um, you would just find your grade level and do the exploration of those tools. So this is K2, and you'll see several uh, familiar icons. And the ones that are linked here are specific for uh, grades K through 12 or K through 2 for the most part. Some of them are a little more um, generic for all grades. So there's K2. Also, um, you'll have to do this in your own copy of the slideshow. Um, that you, if you click on the arrows or the stars, it'll take you to additional resources and samples. 
okay, of those tools. Here's grades three through five. And again, you'll see I've, I've hyperlinked here some extra um, samples for each of those grade levels. Grades six through eight. Grades nine through 12. So there are a couple extra things that I did not go over, but you can explore just like this one here, Tiki Taki Timelines. This is uh, additional ones for um, 9 through 12. Highly recommend watching this um, video project uh, that a student put together. Um, pretty powerful about 9-11. Uh, Okay, so thinking about um, your standards for your grade level, uh, when the video stops, I want you to submit um, any thoughts you have on how these tools may um, enhance what you're doing uh, in the classroom to address these standards. So when the video stops, go ahead and submit your thoughts. In thinking about our six dimensions, there are three that are um, supported very strongly by uh, the tools that were shared um, in this webinar. So think about those, those six dimensions and which three fits the best. And when the video stops, you'll be directed to look at those six dimensions again and you can pick which three fit with, with these descriptions. Did you get it right? So the three are knowledge construction and looking at um, many of those tools, uh, they're, not, uh, they're not all focused on just rote memorization or um, you know, doing a multiple choice type activity. Um, a, lot of the pr a lot of the tools really have kids um, synthesize and analyze the information they're looking at, especially with uh, primary source documents. And as they are um, engrossed in the content and going through whether it's a simulation or an activity with a primary source document or looking at the structures of the text, they really are um, trying to interpret what they're seeing. And they're having to apply it in a new context when they're creating um, a presentation. Uh, learning goals are interdisciplinary because it's, it's history, it's some, and sometimes math if you're looking at the data and statistics, uh, especially with those infographics. Skilled communication, uh, very much multimodal. There's all different types of media that students can access through these tools. And um, many of the activities that are provided also um, have that supporting evidence that they need to either defend their position on a certain topic or to discuss um, causes of an event. And then when they design a product they are needing to think about their audience and to push students further the audience should be um, more than their teacher it should be a worldwide audience or a specific audience of people so if they're creating the project for 
teenagers or if they're creating the project for the community they need to um, look at what they're doing and focus on the purpose and how it will affect that particular audience and finally use of technology for learning uh, several of these tools um, are providing an experience for them that they couldn't access otherwise. So think about um, those documents from Library of Congress and the archives. There's, it's almost impossible to, to be able to get kids to have access to all of those documents at any given time. And because of technology, they are able to access them anytime, anywhere where they have a connection and a device. So that's when it says technology is required so they cannot access that information unless they have technology and because of that um, they are learning as they're exploring and interacting with those uh, different tools. And of course they are designers of a technology product. If you're using any of the presentation tools, um, students have to create something that shows what they've learned. So there's more ideas on our Pinterest board. Um, and if you click the icon here, it will take you to um, the social studies board and pretty much all of the resources that I mentioned uh, during the webinar are linked here and how you interact with Pinterest is you click on the image you click on the image again and then it takes you to whatever website was linked and then you can also click over here with these small thumbnails and open up any of the other ones or you can click at the top and go to, out to the main board again Okay, um, and of course uh, follow WCSD 21 uh, let me get to our disclaimer here. As with anything you do with students online, uh, with, whether they have to create an account or whether they their work is being posted online, make sure that you are aware of the privacy settings um, and the terms of service for each tool that you select um, because it is your responsibility to make sure that you are doing the best you can to protect your your students from anything that's uh, not safe online. And we do have some more information provided here at this link. It's also on our Pinterest board under AUP and privacy concerns. So feel free to uh, educate yourself on those different laws um, and things will be great. Make sure you get uh, permission from your administrator and also from parents. And if you want to learn more about being a 21st century educator, you can uh, visit our website, follow us on Twitter, and our Pinterest boards right there. And I thank you very much for your participation. And uh, that's how you can contact me. And the link to the slideshow is also here. And I will talk to you again soon. Thanks.